by show of hands, who's ever had an infection in this room? Almost everybody. Is there anybody who knows somebody who died from an infection? Thank you. So throughout our history, there's been a number of epidemics of infectious disease, some of them quite horrific. If you go back uh, into the early Middle Ages, 50% of the European population were wiped out by the plague. Um, and then in the 14th century, about 50 million died in Europe. Just uh, 200 years later, um, pandemics are said to be the cause for the native Mexican population to decline from 20 million to 3 million. And then in the 18th century, there was smallpox, um, killing 60 million people in, uh, in Europe. And then TB, just uh, 100 years later, wiping out a quarter of the European adult um, population there. And in 1918, just 100 years ago, the Spanish flu uh, infected 500 people worldwide and caused the, uh, the death of 3 to 5% of the world population. One of the, uh, the biggest human natural disasters uh, in humankind. But mankind came a long way, despite that we still have pandemics like HIV AIDS or just recently the H1N1 swine flu pandemic. Um, things are getting a lot better. Remarkably, most of these infectious diseases, by the way, the deaths related by them, about 90%, are really only due to a, a handful of diseases. And in the modern times of vaccination, antibiotics, and dramatic improvement in, uh, in science, these uh, diseases have been brought under control, at least for the most part, in the industrial, um, in the industrial world. Improved sanitary situ uh, conditions and also a better understanding of uh, the transmission mechanics really um, in decrease the number of infections that we have. But just 200 years ago, hospital infections ran up 60%, and the death rate related to those infections was about 40%. There's reports, um, and you go back in time, where six people shared um, a bed in a hospital. So you had somebody with tuberculosis next to, to a, a, a woman in labor, or a boy next, uh, next to a guy with typhus. There's been insects in the bed. So the sanitary situation was horrible. Luckily, we understand this better now, and um, the situation is really much better in better control. But the, the environment as a whole has completely changed as well. We live longer. Um, the uh, aging baby boomer population now is getting treatments that didn't even exist a few years ago. They also need long-term long -term care, something that didn't exist a few years either. Um, co equipment is much more complex and sophisticated today, and so are the surfaces. For example, how do you clean um, a keyboard? Keyboard is now in almost every patient room. Um, pathogens now travel at the, at the speed of airplanes, and we're dealing with pathogens that are resistant to antibiotics, which means that cleanliness and disinfection is really the only line of defense. But we're still using disinfection technologies from the dark ages. Um, chlorine, for example, is still being used, even though it produces this toxic disinfection byproducts and also leaves a residue. Transient uh, low-skilled uh, labor is, is using highly variable application methods like wiping and spraying and mopping. These methods all introduce a big variability and the, the chance for cross-contamination. And it also raises some questions in terms of how long was that disinfectant actually on, uh, uh, on the surface. And um, uh, if you read the instructions, usually you, uh, there's a dwell time of about 10 minutes. Um, but human nature is just to spray and wipe immediately, and that's what actually happens. But it also raises questions like, um, how much disinfectant are you supposed to use? Are you used too little, too much? And what happens? And how do you even do that? Um, where's that rag has been, you know, that you use to wipe surfaces before it hits actually the food tray? Um, and how do you actually measure whether all the surfaces have been touched and properly disinfected? The truth of the matter is nobody really knows. There are some detection methods, but they're instant methods, but they're actually not very re reliable. And cultured swabbing, which requires a two-day uh, incubation, 
um, doesn't really help either. Sorry about the visuals. The best evidence that um, these methods are really flawed is the fact that 100,000 people, 100,000 Americans, die every year from hospital-acquired infections, HAIs. A hospital-acquired infection is a disease you actually contract while you are in a hospital or healthcare uh, facility. Uh, for example, you have elective surgery, um, get a uh, you uh, have a repair of your hernia, for example, you contract C. diff, which, which is a pathogen which, which might kill you. Uh, interestingly enough, some of these statistics are not really well publicized. But did you know that 1.8 million U.S. citizens year, every year contract um, an HAI? If you are admitted to a hospital today, there's a 5% chance that you will get an HAI. HAI kills more people than breast cancer and prostate cancer combined. And the estimated cost for, to treat these diseases is about $40 billion, which is as much as is being spent on treating um, stroke, diabetes, and lung disease. So, and worldwide, these numbers are even more frightening. The World Health Organization uh, estimates that the, the chances of attracting an HAI is about 20 times higher in a developing country. But there's hope. Uh, new technology is available. Surface disinfection has really been revolutionized. We can treat entire rooms by aerosolizing a stabilized uh, non-hazardous hydrogen peroxide. And what that does, it actually provides complete coverage, complete um, complete um, efficacy, and also complete safety in applications in, in healthcare, life sciences, and public safety. It's environmentally friendly, there's no toxic residue, and all surfaces, horizontal, vertical, low, high, behind the blinds and under the chair, are being treated without human interference. So, if there is better technology available that's more effective and better for the patient and better for the environment, why isn't everybody using it? Well, the price tag is not the barrier. This technology is actually not very expensive. You can treat an entire room for just a few dollars and typically one or two HAIs would cover that cost and then some. What we see is that really one of the barriers is the resistance to change. Embracing new technology and changing operating procedures um, requires will and leadership. The healthcare industry today pays more attention to HAIs primarily because it's a financial issue since insurances do not reimburse for HAIs anymore the way they used to in the past. And also some states require um, reporting of these incidents. But it's not a reporting issue. It's an accountability issue. In our sophisticated healthcare system, the metric is financial success and accountability for, in, for, for, for death and for illness is really mirrored in red tape. <clears throat> so who is really responsible for, for HAIs if, it, if they occur? Is it the doctor? Is it the nurse? Is it anybody? Um, stuff happens. It's, it's an attitude that I think is not acceptable. But HAIs are hard to trace, and even PI lawyers are reluctant to take those cases, uh, which is, is a telltale sign how co convoluted and complex the issue really is. But I want to ask yourself, what is an acceptable standard for an HAI? Is it 1, 2, 10, 100, um, or 1.8 million, as we have? I think the, the, the goal should be zero. And and it's not acceptable that people get sick due to lack of cleanliness and pathogens have not been eliminated in the environment where people are supposed to get better. The bottom line is HAIs are preventable. There are many factors like surgical procedures, hand hygiene, device uh, sterilization and so forth. But eliminating pathogens from the environment and protecting the patient by ways of disinfection is the last line of defense and one of the most important things out there. So, um, and we need to really improve and bring up 
the procedures for cleaning and disinfection to the level of sophistication that is currently used for in therapies and drugs and equipment of modern times um, and uh, to treat modern conditions. So, um, educate yourself. Our website is a good starting point. If you do get to a hospital, ask questions like, has there been an infection in this room? Has it been eliminated? What kind of treatment conditions um, are being used? Insist on change. Insist on change. You can make a difference. And it may save your life or that, one, that of a loved one. Thank you.